Good morning, everybody. I'm Pam from Old Hippie Homesteaders. I want to thank you for subscribing and watching. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to knock everybody's socks off, especially the canny Nazis. There's a canny Nazi alert, guys. Today, I'm canning bread. Actually, I'm canning sweet yellow cornbread from Martha White. Now, I've done this a few other times on YouTube. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still recuperating from my sinus surgery. My face is swollen. My eyes are swollen. Just takes a while. So bear with me. So um, I'm going to be canning this in pint jars. Large mouth jars only, guys. You can use pints. You can use the half pints but it has to be a large mouth jar. It cannot be a small mouth because you can't get the bread out, okay? So um, you can, you don't have to just use the cornbread and you don't have to use a prepackaged mix. We get these every time we go to the food bank and they're starting to pile up, I've got five of them. So I wanna clear some space out of a drawer. So that's why I'm doing this today. Plus I'm out of all my canned breads. Now, a lot of you are saying, why are you going to can cornbread? Why can't you just make it like everybody else? Well, there's a couple reasons. We are out of power a lot up here, a lot. <clears throat> and I am exhausted from, besides being sick or my sinus infection, I'm exhausted from clearing snow. We have been inundated with snow and it just keeps piling up. Also, we have appointments. My husband has late day appointments sometimes at the doctor. I don't feel like coming home cooking. I'll open a can of soup or stew and my bread will already be done. I won't have to worry about it. Or if we're having dinner and he asks if we have any cornbread, I'll just get it off the shelf. I have no problem cooking it when I have time. That's not the main point. The point is that I will have shelf stable pre-made cornbread right in my pantry. So um, you don't have to use just a package mix. You can make it from scratch also. So don't think you have to go out and buy all these. I've used the cornbread. I've used blueberry mix. I've used those little jiffy mixes. Um, whatever you want to do. You can do this with bread also. But just remember, when you go to fill it in your jar, don't fill it up to here because as the bread's cooking, it'll come out the top of the jar. And in one of my videos, you'll see my screw up to where... Well, you'll see, just look and you'll see that the bread just came right out of the jar. So I've got my oven on. Um, I'm you're gonna make it and you're gonna cook it, bake it per the package instructions, okay? So I'm gonna pour these in. I do not grease the jars because that will encourage the food to become rancid. You don't need to grease the jar because when it's all done and you want to use it, you just get a butter knife and you rub it around the rim and it just comes right out. Now when I made it, um, I think it was the last time I put the video out, um, people said that when they made it and they took it out of the oven and they let it sit, they could see a little condensation. That's okay because it goes away as the jar cools, that goes away and that does not encourage any molding or anything like that. If you've done the seals correctly, everything should be okay. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, just continue to watch the video and you don't have to make it. I'm not forcing anybody to cook like this, but if you'd like to try it, just grab a pack, a pack, and maybe a couple jars, just tr just to try it for yourself. Now, I know um, a lot of the questions I got was, how long is it shelf stable? I've had it on my shelf up to two years, but whatever we have in our pantry, whether it be this canned bread or those big number 10 cans of store-bought freeze-dried food, we rotate all that. We eat that. We rotate our stock. There's nothing we leave on our shelf to sit. Um, I have a three-tier pantry. And as one thing becomes depleted, I move the next tier to the forward so we can start using that. Nothing ever sets on my shelves. So basically for us, 
This is about a year. So this calls, each pack calls for a half a cup of milk and one egg. Okay, so I've got five packs. So that's going to be five eggs. Oh, we have so much snow. Oh my gosh. It's three. Four. And five. Okay. I'm going to save those for my chickens. Each package is a half a cup of milk. So here's a whole cup for two packages. Another. And a half. Okay, now I use their life milk so you're going to stir it up now you don't have to water bath this you don't have to pressure can this it's all done in the oven and it has to be done very quickly not the cooking but putting on the seal and the ring. Now, if you don't think I'm being true, go to YouTube and type in canning bread and watch all the homesteaders or anybody can bread. You can make a zucchini bread. You can make your pumpkin bread. Whatever you have, if you have a bunch of zucchini in the freezer, use it. Make your recipe from scratch and make your bread. Just keep in mind, just keep in mind guys, that whatever amount you put in your jar, it's probably going to double. Okay? So, um, just remember that so it doesn't go over the top of the jar, the rim of the jar, or you'll have a mess. Just like I did in one of my previous videos. I've done this with brownies. I've done it with the refrigerator rolls that come in the little round tube. I've done it with that. Where you just open the tube and you drop them one or two of the biscuits into the jar. I'm not encouraging you to do something that would um, harm your family. I'm just showing you another way of canning. I've done this type of canning. Um, I probably started doing it about 20 years ago, the baking of the bread and the rolls in the oven. Um, a lot of people I've been doing it for many, many years. But like I said, if you're a little leery about it, or if you think I'm crazy, okay, that's fine. That's your opinion. And you can just keep on scrolling. But um, I'm, not, I'm not holding 
you hostage, and I'm not forcing you to do this or try it or eat it. I'm just showing you a way that many of us are doing our breads and stuff, okay? So you wanna make sure you get all the lumps out, okay? Now make sure you have your jars setting on a cookie sheet because they won't sit in the oven on the rack. So you have to sit them on the cookie sheet. So I'm gonna take one at a time. This could be kind of the messy part. So let's try not to have any overflow today. I think that's about all I'm going to be putting in the jar is right here because it's going to rise. It's going to double at least. So let's start with that. I know you're tempted to put in more, but trust me, <laughs> don't. Okay, my oven is ready. Put a little bit too much into that one. We shall see what happens. Like I said, this gets a little messy. Try adding just a bit more in here. All right. So that's all I'm gonna put on one tray. I have a little bit left, probably enough for one jar, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it. So you wanna get out a clean cloth. You want to wipe off the rim with your clean cloth. You don't want to have any of that batter on the rim, okay? And then you set them on the tray. Check them really good, guys, because if there's any on the rim, if there's any of the batter on the rim, this won't work.
Okay, so the oven is ready. Let me tell you the instructions on here. <clears throat> okay, it says uh, 17 to 22 minutes. So I have a cake tester and I'm gonna start testing in about 15 minutes. Because the jars are glass, the food does cook faster in the glass jars, okay? I'm gonna take one of the racks out so it doesn't hit anything. Okay, so these are going in. Now be careful, guys. Now you can already have the rack in there and just take one, take them one at a time. <clears throat> and I set them in the middle. And I start my timer. I'm gonna start it for 15 minutes. And I'll be back and show you how they're turning out okay guys so while it's baking you get all your stuff together that you're going to be using I have a cake tester here I found this a million years ago at the Goodwill it's a Wilton cake tester and <laughs> I have it with me everywhere I go because <laughs> I don't want to lose this little sucker <clears throat> I don't have it with me everywhere I go but oh my gosh <laughs> I use it constantly so um, I'm going to be using, these are called four jars. These are the only seals that I use anymore. Um, I have had quite a few bad experiences with the ball because they come from China. Surprise to me. <laughs> the box isn't the same. The rubber on the seal is not the same. And when I pressure can, when I was using the ball seals, they got sucked inside the jar just sucked them right in so I've been using um, the company called four jars I have never had not one seal not not turn out N every single one has been perfect um, it's an American company um, I think they are made um, overseas um, they're trying to get the production over here in the United States but this is an American company um they're bpa free rust proof i just swear by them i swear by them um and they got these cute little tea towels oh my gosh um another discount code because i'm an affiliate for four jars you can use my code and when you go if you want to try them just put in the code old old 10 old 10 and i'm going to put that code in the video description also if you forget it or whatever um but i swear by these seals guys i swear by them not one has gone bad on me not one yet so knock on wood um but i'm very happy with these and most canning people now have turned to four jars so um just wanted to get that out there to you so you want to get your seals ready your rings ready your cake tester ready, okay? So it's already been three minutes. Um, so let's see here. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. I think they're ready. So this is the part that you have to be really fast at, okay? <clears throat> I just want to make sure you can see everything. So um, I think these are done. It's very heavy, guys. Okay, now that I know they're all done, I'm going to turn the oven off. So here's the fast part, guys. Put on the seals. Like you're handing out cards at a poker table. Got to throw them on. Okay, now be very careful. Don't get burned. And you put the rings on, finger tight, not like King Kong. Okay, that 
that's all you do. See, now already those rings are hot already. <laughs> okay. That's it, guys. That's all you do. No hot bath, no pressure canning, no nothing. Now look at, let me see, look at this one. If I can pick it up if it's not too hot. Check out this one, guys. Look how much it rose. Now you remember how much I put in, like it was around here. So it's a good thing, stick to a quarter. I don't even know if I would push it to a third. <laughs> Now this was the one here that had the least amount. And look at that. So remember that when you're going to put your stuff in the jar, it does rise. Okay, so now you're gonna let these set and cool on their own. And you'll notice that as they cool, they'll seal. You'll either hear them or you'll see that they're sealed. Once they're sealed, they're shelf staple. You can put them in your pantry. So that's it, guys. Now, I know a lot of people are like, oh, my gosh, you're going to kill your family because you didn't hot bath it or pressure can it. No, you're not. You're not going to kill your family. But there you go. So if you... <clears throat> run out of time like I do, and it's just the two of us, and I run out of time. This morning, I had to go plow before I could feed our animals. I, I'm th That's getting really old for me. Having to plow just to get to the animals and feed them. I'm 64 years old, and I'm, I love our life. I love where we live, but um, the snow is starting to get to me. <laughs> Anyway, that's what you do. That's all you do. So when you're ready to eat them, you just take the ring off and the seal, and you take a butter knife. Sometimes you don't even have to take a butter knife. Sometimes it just comes out on its own, and you run the uh, butter knife around the rim of the jar, and it'll just come right out. Now, if you want to reheat it before you eat it, take it out of the jar and put it on a, a microwave plate or however you reheat it and um, heat it up for a few minutes. <clears throat> and then you could add your buddy and butter and your honey. Um, now someone asked me if I could add corn to the cornmeal mix. I would not. I would say no, a big no, because corn is a vegetable and it has to be pressure canned. And I think once you start adding anything to your cornbread, onions or anything like that, that's a no-no. That, by adding anything to it, that's going to get you sick. Like I said, because, you know, vegetables have to be pressure canned. And if none of this is pressure canned, don't, I wouldn't do it, guys. I wouldn't do it. But just like this, it's okay. For us and my family, it's okay. And if you're a little leery about doing it, do one packet. You know, pick up a packet of blueberry mix or a small packet of um, brownie mix or whatever. Even if you're making something from scratch, set a little bit aside, put it in a jar and find out for yourself if you like it. So the consistency of this is just like regular cornbread. It's not sticky, it's not dry, it's, it's just cornbread. But that's the way you do it. Now, when I cook this, it said 17 to 22 minutes. For my oven, it took the full 22 minutes. Um, anyway, there you go. It's turned out absolutely perfect. And, um, I hope you enjoy it. I want you to see up close here, guys, because I know the lighting's not very good right now. I got the sun coming in. But there you go. That's the cornbread. So when you do this, you might see a little condensation on the inside as it starts to cool. That's Okay. It's not going to hurt you. It goes, it just, it evaporates and goes away. <clears throat> sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. <coughs> Excuse me. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video.